sitting on a rainbow I've got that string around my What a world, what a life, I'm in love I got a song to sing, I'll make the rain go When I move my finger Lucky me, can't you see, I'm in love Ain't life a beautiful thing As long as I can hold the string I'd be a so and so if I should ever let go. Give me a song to swing, I'll make the rain go when I move my finger. What a world, what a life I'm in love. Ain't life a beautiful thing? As long as I can hold a string, I'd be a so and so if I should ever let go. I want a song to sing, I'll make the rain go when I move my finger. What a world! Aloha, jazz lover, wherever you are in the world. And thanks for being with us once again for another Jazz Intersection interview. On this interview, we hold court with a Hawaii-born international performer who has been in the entertainment business for over 50 years and is still going strong. In 2008, he was awarded the Lifetime Achievement Award by the Hawaii Academy of Recording Arts, Nahoku Hanohano. And in 2006, he received the Music Foundation of Hawaii's Legacy Award for Lifetime Achievement as a vocalist. Let's talk with the Keeper of the Flame, Mr. Jimmy Borges. Aloha, Jimmy, and welcome to the Jazz Intersection. Well, hello, Jeans. I'm so happy to be in the Jazz Intersection with you. I'm honored. And um, it's... It's a nice connection to keep this this flow going between jazz. You know, jazz, as you know, is a niche in the American uh, firmament. It's always been a small niche. It's never been a massive niche, but it's one that will live forever. But it's because of people like you. So I, I, you, I, I applaud you. Well, thank you, Jimmy. Uh, Jimmy, uh, let's tell the listeners why they call you the keeper of the flame. Well, you know what, James? I've, I've been singing professionally since 1955. Wow. And so that's 56 years. Yeah. And I started off as a kid learning the Great American Songbook. The songs that I sang came from Cole Porter, Rogers and Hart, the Gershwins, Irving Berlin, you know, all the great music. And then the practitioners of that music, which I first started listening to, is, uh, you know, going back to Mel Torme, Frank Sinatra, Tony Bennett. But, you know, i got to tell you, you know the first big band I ever sang with? Who was that? Illinois Jacket. You kidding. Have you heard that name? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Of course you have. Flying home, you know, hey, Illinois, yes indeed. Illinois Jacket. I was living in Oakland, California. I moved away from here when I was 12 years old. Hmm. My father moved to uh, San Francisco to where we... Uh, 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 where his job was, but we lived in Oakland, California. So, uh, upon graduation from high school there, I got my honorary degree over here from St. Louis, but I actually graduated from a school called St. Elizabeth mm -hmm. in Oakland. Anyway, at the age of, oh, I was a, I was a little after, somewhere between 18 and 19, I went down to West Oakland to a club called Slim Jenkins. Mm. And it had great, great jazz. Uh -huh. And I answered an ad in the Oakland Tribune about, you know, uh, if you want to sing with a big band. And the big band happened to be Illinois Jacket. And so I, I went down there and I won. And I got to sing for a whole weekend with Illinois Jacket. I didn't know at that time <laughs> how important this cat was, you know. I mean, I just, wow, that's, that's great singing with a big band. So it was it was a wonderful start, and uh, that was, that was my that? beginning. So like, you know, you don't get it doesn't get much better than that, James. I'm telling you. By the way, are you uh, uh, are you from a musical family? 
No, not really. But mostly educators and, and professional people in my family. How did you, uh, so then, how did you get started singing? Did you go to a vocal teacher? You went to music? No, you know, I just, I just, during the war years here, during the first, uh, second world war, mm -hmm. uh, the, the GIs used to come to my mother, my mother and her aunties had a hot dog stand and the GIs would come over there because the girls looked pretty good <laughs> and they were selling hot dogs like mad. Uh -huh. They would bring the girls, my mother and my aunties, uh, these V records, which were all these big band records. Mm. And my mother would bring them home and play them. And so I started listening to these records when I was a kid. When I was six, and six seven years old, listening to the big band records, when a lot of, nobody else really had access to that, I did. And I, I, did, I found out I loved the sound of the American jazz and big band especially. Right, right, right. But that's how I got started because nobody else in my family, they were all pretty much professional people. Oh, okay, okay. Hey, uh, have you finished your autobiography? Yeah, I would say a quarter of the way through. You know, there's, there's so there's so much, <laughs> and you got to go through it. And I got to, I have to go through my, uh, uh, you know, tape recorded and the whole. Right, right. A lot of editing. Yeah, a lot of editing. Mm -hmm. And when you live, I'm I'm seventy. I'll be seventy six in June. Right on. But when you reach up this point, there's a lot of living. I'm and telling you. <laughs> I didn't realize how much living there was, James. <laughs> I'm telling you. So, so uh, how long did how long were you out in uh, in Oakland and around about on the mainland before you came back to Hawaii? Well, I started my career in San Francisco. I started going to little jazz club, little clubs. Mm -hmm. You know, I knew I wanted to sing. I went to college on a football scholarship, and when 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 I was going to college. I, my girlfriend was a, a girl named Ann Richards who used to sing for Stan Kenton. Oh, okay. And so she introduced me to, the, to, to some of the college mates when I was at San Francisco State who were doing uh, 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 shows at different colleges. Mm -hmm. And they were John, it was Johnny Mathis, Cal Jader, and Paul Desmond. Wow. And these were some of the guys that I, that influenced me to get out of football and just get into music because they liked my singing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it worked for me. And so I started, I made my first dollar singing professionally uh, when I was 20 years old.